about hard work. It's about trying to make a difference. It's about us trying to do things that were never done before. Johnny's spirit was bigger than just the area of law. I think Johnny was a, a change agent or social agent for change throughout society. Johnny himself represented hope to a lot of people. He represented hope to his clients. He offered hope to those people who were voiceless. A man of the people, compassionate, flamboyant, outspoken, a vehicle for social change during a turbulent time in America. Johnny Cochran Jr.'s legacy includes all of these attributes and many, many more. Growing up in rural Louisiana, Johnny's family played a key role in his rise to success. I was born in Shreveport, Louisiana, where all your friends were black and everybody was Baptist and your food was fried. We weren't rich in, in material things, but we were rich in like love and things like that really counted. I said, Mom, Mom, I really would like to be a lawyer. I think I, that's what I really think I can do. I think that's really my calling. If I, if I can represent people, if I can speak out for somebody, if I can stand up for someone and, and, and advocate for them. This is like, a, I was like 12 years old. I remember May 17, 1954, like it was yesterday. I think the segregation decision of 1954 probably did more than anything else to awaken the Negro from his apathy to demanding his right to equality. And to see this man who had used the law to change society, I knew then, like, he was my hero, and I knew from that point on, not only do I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a lawyer like Thurgood Marshall. Tonight, we are here to celebrate and begin a new chapter of Johnny's legacy. In March of 2005, Johnny passed away from a brain tumor, a great man silenced in the prime of life. But even in death, Johnny's fighting spirit lives on. With the love and support of the Cochran family, the tireless efforts of Dale Cochran, the financial backing of the community and the prestige of the Cedar sinai Medical Center, this deadly disease that has taken so many lives will face a new and awesome army. Spearheading this new center at Cedar sinai will be one of the most outstanding neurosurgeons in the world, Dr. Keith Black. The goal of the Johnny Cochran Brain Tumor Center is to rapidly advance discoveries that we make in the research lab uh, to develop new treatments for our patients uh, with devastating disorders that affect the human brain. Uh, what we want to do is to, is to bring these new therapies that we're developing in the lab to our patients uh, to provide, hopefully, one day cures as quickly as possible. Dr. Black has spent his entire career focused on unraveling the mysteries of the human brain. He has established himself and his team at Cedar sinai as the number one place to go for people suffering with brain tumors. I had a lot of doctors that we tried to help find a way to take care of the brain tumor. Um, met most of them, though, actually all of them, except for Dr. Keith Black said that it was inoperable and that I'd go eventually blind in the right eye, go in a coma and then die. I was six years old when I went in for my surgery. I was a week before my seventh birthday. People have described my recovery as miraculous and there are times where I feel it's a miracle. Not that I'm here, but that I was able to have somebody like Dr. Keith Black and, the, and everybody at Cedars there for me at the time that I needed. The fight for a cancer cure is ongoing. Every step taken gets us closer to that ultimate goal. So one of the examples of what we've been able to do over the last five years uh, is to actually look at the potential of using the immune system to fight and eradicate cancer. And we've been able to develop a vaccine for brain cancer, the most deadly form of tumors in the brain called a glioblastoma. And we've demonstrated with the combination of the vaccine plus chemotherapy, we've been able to increase the two-year survival for our patients from 8% to 42%. Fighting brain cancer and other diseases of the brain takes incredible dedication, not only from the doctors and researchers on the front lines, but also from a group whose fundraising success has brought us to this moment. I'm very proud to be a member of this group. We're called the Brain Trust. 
the brain trust is absolutely uh, a godsend. Uh, I have been blessed with uh, the most phenomenal and remarkable group of women that one could ever imagine that uh, uh, for our good fortune and for the good fortune of our patients and their families have decided to focus their energies and their talents on making sure that we have the resources and the funding that we need to to do the work and the research that, that we're so focused and dedicated to do. We don't have a billion dollars um, like a pharmaceutical company to develop a new drug. We don't have 15,000 scientists working on a particular project. Uh, we have to make the odd observation, you know, to be able to see the mole on the bread and, and translate that into an antibiotic that can cure human disease. Uh, we have a few million dollars a year um, and 35 people working very hard in the research lab to try to find new treatments and, and new cures for disorders that affect the human brain. With your continued help and support, Johnny Cochran Jr.'s legacy will be to give hope to thousands today and also generations yet to be born. I, I think Johnny Cochran Jr. would be ecstatic to know that there's a brain tumor center named after him. After him. He would be so pleased um, and very proud that he um, will hopefully make a difference to many people. I'd like to thank Dr. Keith Black for giving me back my son. It takes all of us pulling for one another and helping one another to make the miracles come true. I've always said that the legacy you leave is based on the life you live. To whom much is given, much is expected.